Okay, welcome all together uh, for the sixth meeting of uh, the uh, RDM team of HPC and NRW on our seminar series, Research Data Management and HPC, HPC Challenge or Change. And uh, today uh, we have uh, a well-known guest here, that's uh, Katja Jansen. Uh, she's from RWTH Aachen and she's going to, to speak about cosine, what was, what is and what will be. The stage is yours. Perfect. Thank you very much for the nice introduction. Um, yeah, my name is Katja Jansen. I'm working for the IT Center and for the Cosign Group. I'm um, the representative service managerin and also the Scrum Master and of our Cosign team. And um, yeah, today I'm very happy to be here and um, that we will have time during the next uh, one and a half hours to get some more information about Cosign. Um, yeah, just briefly, what is the content uh, for today? I have some general information about Cosign. Um, there was already a presentation, I guess it was in April, um, where my colleague and I already presented the general functions of Cosign and also some information about metadata profiles, but um, no worries. <laughs> I will try to uh, give you a quick recap about this. So if you didn't join the last presentation, you hopefully will still get uh, some information and will be able to follow. And um, if you didn't join the first presentation, the video, I guess, is still online, so you can also watch it afterwards. And in case if there are any questions, just uh, type it in the chat. And uh, if I lose you, uh, just uh, raise up your hand and then we will figure it out. Um, yeah, after the general information part, I will give you more detailed information about um, resources and quota and um, how you can um, apply for quota and cosign. Then um, we are quite happy that we developed uh, some new features uh, in cosign, which I will present to you. And I will also show you how you can um, collaborate on um, features and in general with the cosign team. And um, as I know, I might be uh, faster as I expect, so I guess there will be uh, time for questions and comments. And uh, yeah, feel free to use the chat or um, afterwards you can also um, yeah, use your voice and uh, raise your hand. Yeah, starting with the general information part. Um, yeah, just as a short review um, of the last presentation, what is the problem and what is our solution? So. Um, I hope that everyone already heard about the FAIR principle. So um, it stands for findable, accessible, reusable, and interoperable. And um, the FAIR handling of research data is most of the time not a part of a researcher's daily routine. Um, so sometimes or quite often it's the case that um, researchers doing their research and they will miss on um, saving metadata in a good way. And then when it comes to, um, for example, a publication, then they realize, oh, I didn't save all the metadata, I would need to publish my data. And um, yeah, of course, uh, during the research itself, there is a loss of metadata when you will not uh, follow the FAIR principles. Um, so it is a very good uh, way that you think about before starting a project, a project how you could realize it. And even if you already started a project or when it comes to um, archiving your data, it's still a good point uh, to think about what you can do. And our solution for um, implement um, directly the FAIR principles into your um, daily work routine and your daily life, um, you can use Cosign. And um, Cosign is a research data management platform and um, I will give you a quick overview um, why it is also so important because um, yeah, researchers uh, most of the time need a lot of space. For example, when you're working with um, big micro microscope data um, or in other research um, areas, you will need a lot of storage space. And um, hopefully every one of us know that it should be not a good idea to just save it on the USB stick and um, just give it around. So um, when using Cosign, um, we have a data storage behind um, our yeah, research data management platform, which allows up to um, 125 terabytes of storage for um, each application. 
and then you can access the storage via cosine. So um, we have the storage behind cosine and cosine um, is the platform for the metadata management. So we will give you a storage when you save also the metadata. So we will help you to um, yeah, follow the FAIR principles and then you will be able to save your data, uh, data in a good way. More input um, regarding the storage in general, how you can do the applications, I will um, give you during this presentation. Maybe starting also with some general information um, regarding the FAIR principles and um, how they are in line with cosine. Um, so in cosine, you have different login possibilities. So you can um, log into cosine with different um, possibilities also across institutional boundaries. What does this mean? Um, for the one hand, we have the um, singer sign on of um, the universities, which are already um, onboarded to cosine. And on the other hand, um, you can use the um, ORCID, um, which each researcher can easily create online. And then you can um, log into cosine. Uh, which functions you can use afterwards um, and depending on the login possibility you've chosen, I will explain to you on the following slides. Um, just to keep it in mind that you have different options and everyone who has an ORCID can use Cosign. There is also um, a role management in Cosign. So inside a project, we have different roles um, and the owner role is, um, yeah, the on the top level, I would say in Cosign. Um, so you can um, have administrative rights, so you can add some members and you can also um, adjust the quota inside the project. And uh, members can uh, read and write um, the data, so they can also um, change something, they can also change the metadata, etc. And the guest role um, has only read access. So um, as I always uh, recommend it's good if you have um, external project partners who should just get read access. Of course, you could also um, get or give them the member role, but if they just should have the read access, the guest role is the best. Then um, looking at the FAIR principles on the metadata, um, we have different steps where the researchers need to enter the metadata. So um, the first level um, is the project level. So um, when creating a project, you already need to type in some metadata. There is just um, the general metadata, I would say. So for example, you need to type in the project name and when the project starts, when it will end. Um, you can type in some um, um, internal reuse um, rules and you can also decide if your metadata um, is inside of cosine findable. Then on the resource level, you will be also enter some metadata. Again, the name for the resource and um, yeah, also um, which resource type you are using, etc. And on the data level, there you will have the so-called metadata profiles, which are um, a bit more individual because you can choose um, your own application profile, which you want to use. And um, in Cosign, all of the metadata profiles which are created by researchers are available. So you can check if there is one which fits your data or you can also create your own one. And um, as I've already mentioned before, you can um, also share your uh, metadata, not your data, just the metadata, publicity in uh, Cosign, which means that um, for everyone who is logged into Cosign, they can search um, for a specific term and then they can find that you have some data for it and then they can contact you. And um, the search um, which is below this um, is called the elastic search function. Then on the resource level, we have different resource types where we have some uh, more slides later on because this is always a topic uh, which needs a bit more explanation. But maybe um, at this point, it's just important that in Cosign, you can also archive your data for 10 years after your project ends. And we have the so-called handle PIDs for long-term identification. <clears throat> and then um, we have this also on the project level. So for each project and each resource um, directly when you create it, you will automatically um, get a PID. Yes. Um, to get you 
hopefully a good example how you could uh, use COSA. And of course, this is not uh, the way how you must do it, but um, just that you get an overview how you could do it. Um, I will go through it step by step. So, for example, um, when you are a researcher for, uh, from the RWTH Aachen, um, you will do your experiments. Maybe you will have some cooperations with other universities or also with external project partners. And then you will um, save your data, hopefully in a good way as well um, as your metadata. And um, after or even in between, you will do also the analysis of your data. So you will have your raw data as well as the um, analyzed data. Um, there also comes the part in, um, because uh, today this is uh, related to the HPC context where you might do some um, HPC stuff and um, you will add it to the analysis of your data, you will analysis on the HPC cluster, etc. And um, when you finish the analysis of your data, um, you will archive your results and um, maybe there will be also um, the need for the reusage. So maybe you want to do um, a publication or um, you want to get um, some other people who are interested in your research um, get the access to your data. How does this um, work in detail? So again, um, we are looking on our researcher um, who will first log into Cosign. We are one um, of the login possibilities which I've mentioned before. In this example, um, the researcher is from the RWTH. So the RWTH because uh, Cosign is uh, developed at the RWTH, of course, can use um, the um, single sign on because we are already onboarded and then can um, create some projects. Um, in Cosign, there is no maximum how many projects you can create. You can create as many projects and sub projects as you want. So um, you create a main project and then inside of this main project, you can create sub projects inside the sub project. You can again create more sub projects. So the structure is quite like um, a tree. And um, yeah, this will be also shown in your dashboard and cosine. So for this example, we will do it the easiest. So we will just have one project. And then we can um, decide who we want to invite to this project. So for this example, uh, maybe you would invite um, other uh, members from your institute who are also working on the same topic, a topic as you are working. And then you can decide if they should have the same rights as you. So when you create a project, you are directly added as the um, owner because then you can um, enter the metadata, you can adjust the quota, etc. Um, or you can also add them as uh, members and then they can have the read and write access. Yeah, and there's also um, the possibility that you can invite users uh, from other projects. So if you created the main project, you can use the import function. So you can also import other members, owners or guests um, to the new created projects. So um, I split it up into two cases. So for example, when you have small data files, um, you will be able to directly um, create a resource. In this case, um, I would assume that the um, RDS rep resource could be fine. Um, this means that you can use Cosign via the um, web interface. So for small data files, this um, is a quite good way because um, when you upload your data um, via the web browser, you will always be um, forced to enter your metadata inside of this uh, metadata profile. And um, yeah, it is um, possible to upload it via the browser. So we did some improvements, which I will also explain later on that you are now able to upload um, up to 20 gigabyte um, just via the web browser. And um, yeah, as I've already mentioned, um, the metadata profiles come from another platform, which is called AIMS. So if you want to create your own metadata profile, if you have um, very individual data or there's no metadata profile which fits your needs, you can just use this platform, um, enter your token, and then it will be, um, yeah, there will be a merge request and the data stewards from us will review it in a technical way and then you will have it available inside of Cosign. And then, um, of course, after you've created your resource, inside of the resource, you will be able to store your data. And um, when you're using, for example, just the normal web resource, 
you can just um, upload your data via the uh, map interface or the UI, which is uh, also the same. Um, yeah, and then after your project ends, your data will be archived for 10 years. Sometimes or the more often, this is not the case that you just have uh, small data files. That's why I added um, the second path. Um, for example, you have big data files. Um, then you will not directly get quota inside of Cosign. So um, for the web resources, when you are allowed to use it, so um, there is a difference that um, universities, which are already onboarded to Cosign, will get directly 100 gigabyte um, web resource um, for each project. Um, but if you want to have other resource types, um, so the so-called um, S3 resource, where you can upload big data files because um, the system behind is the um, S3 storage system, which I will also explain you later on a bit more. Um, then you need to do a quota application via the platform YARDS. Um, I guess in the HPC context, most of you have already heard about it. We are also using it for Cosign to do our quota applications and also do the review process, which might take uh, up to weeks, but um, yeah, most of the time, at least for the RTH, it's a bit faster. Um, yeah, and then of course it goes the same way. So then you can create as many resources as you want. You can access uh, the resources itself. I would say when you're using the S3 resources, the S3 clients are the best and then your data will be also archived. But how does this look in uh, detail? We will have a look on it during the next slides. So um, to give you some more input on um, the data storage and cosign, um, you have different possibilities. So um, as I've already mentioned, you can upload files via um, the web interface. You can also use the API or you can use S3 clients, um, for example, Cyberduck or MinIO. And um, when you want to upload um, files to Cosign and you have um, a lot of small files, um, I would recommend to do it as a zip file um, because then the upload is faster and more stable. And if you have uh, large files, as I've, as I've already mentioned before, the best way is to use S3 clients because um, then you don't have the um, problems by uploading it via the web interface. You can directly communicate with the storage system behind and the upload will be faster and yeah, more stable. And um, there is also the possibility that you can write scripts for um, doing the upload in an automated way. So for example, using a Python script, um, there is also the Python SDK, um, which was established by uh, one of us, um, which you can use. And then you can um, upload your data just as you want. And um, already mentioned on one of the slides before, we have the so-called handle PIDs um, for the unique identification, and um, they are also assigned on resource as well as project level. And um, why is archiving so important? Uh, we always mention that um, it's a good scientific practice to do it, it's highly recommended. And of course, if you want to um, increase the reusability of your data as well as your metadata, and in Cosign, um, the archiving state looks like um, a read-only status. So um, when your project um, is archived, all of the data which is inside will be set to a read-only status, but you will be informed um, beforehand. You will get uh, some emails and um, no worries. Uh, Hopefully you will not miss that uh, your data can from this time point on then not be changed. And if you are interested in um, archive your data for the long term, we will um, highly recommend to um, contact um, services which are yeah, professional for this. So um, so-called um, Langzeitarchivierung, uh, there you will get some information how you can um, store and archive your data even after the 10 years. The question which um, often comes up is um, how external users can um, also see the data inside of Cosign or how you can um, share the data um, with others. So for example, with external project partners um, or just um, share your data with others who are interested in the data itself. So one 
disclaimer, there is no publication inside of Cosign possible. So even if we give for each project and resource PIDs, these are no DOIs. So we give out the handle PIDs. So you can give away the um, PIDs and when someone types in the PID, they will go to a um, yeah, PID contact page and then they can, can contact the project owners and um, can get access to the project if you allow this to them. But um, there is no possibility to publish the data directly in Cosign because um, we just want uh, to make sure that you think about in a really good way where you want to publish your data if there is a repository which is um, directly um, related to your research area and therefore we just uh, recommend to contact um, your publication service for example for the RTI it would be um, RTI publications and uh, we are also working on um, doing this contact of the publication service easier so you will see um, during the slides where I will present to you the new features um, how we established this um, that you can contact your own publication service in an easier and better way and that the data from Cosign can be easily transferred to them. And then the point um, regarding um, external persons, so there are also different possibilities. Um, of course there is the role concept, so you could just um, add them to the project as each role as you prefer, so the owner, member and guest, depending on which rights they should have. They can easily log into Cosign via the ORCID and um, in the future there will be another login possibility and um, they will be able to get access to Cosign and um, when you invite them to the project they will also have access um, to the quota and um, when for example they have a member or owner rights they will be also able to upload data um, and you can use it um, to exchange data. If you have um, the S3 storage, um, you can also share, of course, the credentials. So um, you will also always have on the um, um, yeah the project and resource um, side there are the credentials, and there is a difference between the read and write credentials. So it's quietly the same as the member and the guest role. So you should be really aware of which credentials you give away. So just please keep in mind that um, if you give away the read and write credentials, um, someone would have, um, for example, the member role so-called, um, and then they will be able to also delete some stuff, etc. So just keep it in mind, it's a possibility, but you need to check if this is uh, for your use case the best. And um, when you for example, publish your data and you use Cosign as a storage and um, also store your metadata inside of Cosign. We are always happy um, when you are using the text proposal um, that you mentioned that your data was stored inside of Cosign and in a way we helped you um, to create good research data, just to keep this in mind. Then uh, coming to the part uh, where I want to dive a little bit more into um, the resources and quota and how does this uh, work inside of Cosign. I've already talked about um, quota applications and YARDS platform, etc. So um, I created one slide where I just want to give you the background that you understand um, what are the possibilities, why are we doing it the way we are doing it, and um, yeah, just to um, give you a better overview. Um, so there is a storage, um, there are different types of storage. Um, so we have the so-called research data storage. This is the storage system which we have at the moment, um, which are only, yeah, which is only for um, authorized universities. So the universities which are already onboarded to Cosign. And in the future, there will be the so-called data storage NRV. Um, there I will talk <laughs> some more in the next slides, but um, the data storage will be available for all universities um, of DHNRV. Um, yeah. And there, um, as well, the 
research data storage as well as the data storage NRW are both funded by the Ministerium für Kultur und Wissenschaft des Landes Nordrhein-Westfalen and COSIGN serves as a platform for metadata management as an access point. So the storage which is, which is funded um, is only given to us when we um, follow the structure how the metadata management should be um, um, should be um, followed by the researchers and then you can use COSIGN to enter your metadata and then you can save the data in the storage system. Due to the fact that the access for S3 and also for warm resources um, is possible via S3 clients, for example, as I've mentioned before, you can use Cyberduck and MinIO, um, we need this kind of quota applications. Um, the S3 resource I've already mentioned before, the ROM resource might be a new term for you um, if you're not uh, joined the first presentation. Uh, WOM stands for write once, read many. So whenever you save a file inside of such a WOM resource, it will stay there forever. So you will not be able to delete it, you will not be able to change anything because this is um, a resource type for very high manipulation um, protection safe and um, that's why for this kind of resource there are more specific questions needed so if you do an application for an s3 resource we will ask you questions regarding the workflow the metadata management etc i will show you some examples um, on the next slides but if you want to do an application for a warm resource please make sure that your data needs this um, high um, protection and you need to answer um, the questions that we know that it's needed and um, how you will be aware that um, the data which is once saved um, cannot be deleted and you will really need to be sensitive to not just save the data and then you will have a lot of storage um, which is not really needed yeah Coming to the HPC context, um, the arts platform is there already well established and that's why um, we for Cosign also decided to use um, the arts platform also and um, since July last year, so roughly one year now, we have our own Cosign instance um, where you can do the quota applications. To give you some more insight on um, which resource types do we have, which might fit the best, etc. Uh, we have this figure. Um, for Cosign, we also have a documentation. There you will find the old version. Hopefully uh, today or latest tomorrow, we will update uh, the figure. Uh, we just finished it uh, yesterday, so I just put it in uh, the slide that you can already see it and not be overwhelmed by the um, last one. So you can just ask yourself, some questions. So the first question would be, do you need some storage? If no, then you could also store your data somewhere else because there are different um, resource types in Cosign which can be used by everyone and there is no storage behind. That's why everyone can use it and you can just do your metadata management inside of Cosign. The first one would be the GitLab resource which means that your data is stored inside of a GitLab project which you've already created and you can just link it to Cosign and then your data will still be stored in the GitLab um, repository and then you can save the metadata inside of Cosign. So um, you type in your um, GitLab project uh, URL and you will use a token and then the GitLab project with your Cosign project will be quite in a way connected. So you will see inside of Cosign what is inside of your GitLab um, project and then you can add some data, delete some data and um, yeah, you can also for each file which you upload save the metadata. Then for example, if you not have a GitLab project but maybe your data is somewhere else and you don't want to change it, still fine. Um, there we have the resource type which is called linked data. So your data is stored, for example, on another server and you will just link to the data. So you just easily type in the URL, etc. 
And then you can also save the metadata inside of Cosign. And um, yeah, that's just a good way if you want to um, save metadata and don't need the storage. If you need the storage, um, it would come to the next question um, where we ask if uh, manipulation protection is needed. Um, the fact which I described before, so if this is really needed, um, you would need the um, RDS ROM resources. And if not, which to be honest is most of the time the case, then you can ask yourself the question if um, you would need access via the S3. So if you want to use S3 clients, for example, then easy way, if you need it, you would uh, choose the um, S3 resource. And if not, then you can also use the web resource. And for example, if you are part of the AVTH, then you would directly get 100 gigabyte um, web resource and can directly start inside of Cosign. If you want to use um, GitLab and link data resources, you can also log in just with the ORCID. You can create projects, you can create as many GitLab and link data resources as you want. And if you want to have um, a sweet storage or warm storage, you need to do the application via the arts platform and fill out the required fields. And we will do the review and give you some feedback if you can use the storage. Yeah, here you can um, see in a table, uh, which is also from our documentation, the same which I said before, but I know that uh, sometimes it's a bit hard to understand in the beginning. Um, that's why I also put it here and that you know it's in the documentation. So you can just um, go to the Cosign documentation and just look it up. Um, which resource types we have, you can also see here that uh, these are links. So there are some more information to the uh, resource types themselves. And here you can also directly find the um, links to the application form, which links you then to the arts platform. And um, yeah, now I want to give you some further input what's going on in these um, quota applications, which you can hand on with the arts platform. So just a quick, oops, just a quick workflow. So I separated it um, in the in terms of before the application, what you need to do during the application and then what's going on after the application that you just get a good overview um, what's going on. So before you are doing the application, you should create um, the project or the projects in Cosign. Um, you will later on see why this is important. You should already think about which metadata profile fits your needs. So if there is one in Cosign that you keep in mind what's the name and if there is no metadata profile which fits your data um, you should create your own and um, there is also a hint which I want to drop here that um, you should be aware that um, the review of the application profiles or the metadata profiles could take up to two weeks so please just keep this in mind that um, the review of the metadata profile when you create a new one as well as the application process itself can take each up to two weeks. And then just that you keep it in mind if you need your storage, not just in a month, but maybe earlier, that you start um, early enough to create your metadata profile. You should also um, have an overview um, about the file sizes and also roughly about the total amount of um, the quota which you need for your projects in total. Uh, I know that uh, when you are starting a project, you will not be able to know how much quota in total you will need. Um, I'm also, so my background is also from a research file. I can totally understand that this is not possible. Sometimes um, it's just that we want to get a brief overview that you thought about how much quota you could need. So it's just the fact that you should not enter oh, the maximum is 125 terabyte for one um, application, then I would just type this in, no matter what I need. So just um, try to think about it and to avoid that you need more or that you get more storage than you really need. Um, and you should uh, just think about, it's also a good idea for yourself that you have a brief overview of your workflow. And um, especially when you are starting a project, it's always a good idea to, for example, fill out um, a data management plan to just um, 
have a structure and all sorts of structure how the data will be saved inside your institute and who will have access to the data, etc. that you just make it clear in the beginning. And of course, uh, when you just want to archive your data, this is um, maybe it was done before, but when you are coming to Coastline and you just want to archive your data, then uh, you don't need to type in the metadata for each file. We just want to make sure that you save, for example, metadata for each folder or for the project in general. So during the application itself, there will come some questions which you need to answer. Um, the first one would be the project URLs. And here you can see um, the connections because that's why in the beginning you need to create the projects itself or if you want to have more projects, for example, you could also have a main project and then some sub projects. And for example, for the main project, you want to have 10 terabyte and then for the um, sub project one, you also have to have 10 terabyte also for sub project two, etc. This we need to know in the application because um, when we approve, approve your storage application, we will afterwards um, give you the quota and we need to type in each project URL and give it then to you. Um, so if we don't have them, we need to get in contact with you, etc. So you can save us and also you a lot of time when you directly um, type it in the right way in the um, application form. And that's also the same for the metadata profiles. Um, so there's a field where you need to type in which metadata profile you're using and um, how you will manage your metadata. Um, if you are answering this question in a detailed way and just give us some um, input, of course, there could be still some questions coming up, but then it's much easier for us to understand what are you doing and how you will um, save your data as well as your metadata inside of Callsign. Then, um, of course, for the application, we need to know um, how much quota you need in total. And if you just write that you want to have 125 terabyte and you just write that, for example, you have text files or just small files, then in our minds, it's just not really clear or for the reviewers, it's hard to understand if you calculated it in a good way, there will be also some contact back and we will ask. But um, yeah, we are really happy if you think about this before. And the overview of the workflow is um, important because we want to know um, how the data will be transferred to Cosign. For example, if you already wrote some scripts or um, if you just want to upload it via the web interface, maybe if you do an application for 100 terabyte, it would be not an easy way to um, upload each file via the web interface and type in the metadata. Um, also via the web interface, then we would also ask if you already thought about it. And um, maybe as a hint, because I'm not sure, I guess I didn't put it on the next um, slide. There's also the possibility to get a test project, um, which means that for two months, you will be invited by us to a project. And then you can test um, the usage of Cosign in general. So you will have um, 100 gigabyte for the web resource and one gigabyte for the S3 resource. And then you can just um, see if you can upload your data with um, S3 clients, how does um, the creation of resources work, the usage of the metadata profiles, etc. cetera. And um, if you want to have such a test project, um, yeah, you can contact the RWTH. If you are apart from the RWTH, you can just contact the service desk. And if you are from another university, you can contact your own university because um, all of the DH NRV universities already have some test projects and should be able to invite you there. Coming to the part after the application, um, there are also two cases. So um, the first, and uh, I would say the happy case, uh, would be that um, there is a direct approval. So um, two reviewers will have a look on your storage application. And if both say, this is fine, this looks good, um, all of the questions were answered. We have uh, the project URLs, we have a description, how the metadata management will be done, how much quota is needed, etc. Then uh, the storage can be directly used in Cosign. So um, you will get an email that um, yeah, the granting of your storage uh, is finished 
and then you can decide how many resources you want to create. Um, yeah, you just have the quota inside of Cosign and you can by you decide how you want to distribute it inside of this project or if you've mentioned that you have different projects and sub projects for the same subject, we will give you the storage for each um, project or sub project and then in each project you can create resources. The second case would be that um, one or also two reviewers said that um, it's just restrictable suitable. So the first case would be that both say, yeah, it's suitable, just go like this. And the second one would be that um, it's restrictable suitable. So there are still some open questions from the reviewers. And um, most of the time it's regarding the metadata management so that we want to be sure how you will save your metadata. Uh, maybe there was no metadata profile given. Maybe there was no metadata profile created or maybe the amount of quota is just not very clear, then you will get an email with some um, questions, uh, which then you um, can answer. And then after we get all of our informations, uh, hopefully the application gets approved or just in uh, so far, uh, just a few cases, maybe it will be rejected if there is no answer, for example. And um, yeah, if the application gets approved, it's the same, um, like in the first case, you will be able to distribute your storage inside of Cosign. Oh yes, and here I just um, added the hint that um, you should keep in mind that um, the review of new metadata profiles, which you created with um, the AIMS platform can take up to two weeks. And um, there can be also some questions um, from the data stewards if there is something not clear. So they will just check it in a technical way and see um, if it makes sense um, and if it looks like, if it's functioning and um, yeah, just to keep it in mind for you because also for the application, you would need to type in your metadata profile. Of course, you could also type in that you already handed in the merge request for the new metadata profile. So now I want to give you some input um, how does the current status is of the quota applications and the research data storage and how will it be in the future? So the current status is that we have the research data storage. On some sites you also saw the um, short version RDS. This is usable by authorized universities. If you are not sure if you can use it, um, please check the documentation of CoSign. There is a list. And uh, you can also check if um, when you want to log into Cosign, um, if your university is already listed and then you can see if you are able to create um, the so-called RDS resources. If you are not allowed to um, use the research data storage at the moment, you can still log in with the ORCID and you can um, create the GitLab and linked data resources. So just um, use your ORCID or create a new ORCID if you didn't have anything yet. Um, and then you can use Cosign in this way. There is also the possibility that um, if you have a cooperation, for example, with the RBTH, who is already allowed to um, create resources on the research data storage, of course, a person from the RBTH could create the project and um, the resources, and then they can add you to the project and um, you can work together on your research data. This is also a good possibility. The outlook um, is that there will come the data storage um, NRV, which will be usable by all of the um, universities of the NRV. And we will use the arts reviews in a so-called peer review system, which means that um, there will be one reviewer from the own university. So for example, if um, a researcher from the RWTH would now hand in um, an application for storage, one reviewer from the RWTH will be chosen and one from another university. And um, yeah, then the one from the RWTH will get in contact with you if there are questions or um, if the storage granting um, will take place. And there will be no difference um, for the usage of GitLab and linked data. Both of them will still be usable by all researchers um, who can log in via ORCID. When will this take place? So um, at the moment we are 
still working on um, yeah, setting up the data storage NRV and make sure that um, the creation of resources is possible, etc. So there is still some analysis phase going on. So I don't want to um, yeah, clearly say that it will be available from time point X, but hopefully um, at the end of this year, um, we will start the provisioning of the data storage NRV resources. Uh, even if this figure is um, not ready yet, uh, I still want to show it to you. Um, how does the concept uh, looks like? And um, yeah, just to give you an overview. So um, when the data storage NRV is there, um, uh, all of the uh, researchers of um, DH NRV and also from um, NFDI, I guess I've not mentioned it before that also um, members of the NFDI, for example, if there is an NFDI project um, which has an NFDI data steward, they will be also able to log into Cosign and they will be also able to um, get access to the storage. So um, as you can see here, above 100 gigabyte because 100 gigabyte um, everyone will get directly. So without any application, um, then it comes to the data storage NRV part. And you can see here the universities um, where the storage stands. So we have a redundant uh, storage system and um, it's not clear how this will be um, worked on yet and still also in the analysis phase there will be an HPC connector but um, yeah some more information on this will be following. That was the part uh, regarding resources, quarter applications, etc. in um, Cosign with the Arts platform. And now I want to give you some more input on uh, new features which we worked on during the last month, yeah, roughly during the last half year since uh, my last presentation here, and what uh, you as a community um, can contribute to. Starting with some, I would say, quite cool stuff. Um, there were some improvements regarding the web interface and the login. So as you can see on the right, um, we will, we have now the um, dark mode. So before it was just that you can have it in the white mode. Now you can use the dark mode. You can uh, switch it off and on. It's uh, still in the better phase. So if you see something which is not uh, as it should be, you can also contact us. And um, yeah, maybe just for the technical part, um, this was related to an upgrade to um, Vue 3 and uh, Bootstrap 5. And um, yeah, I would say just a small update, but a cool update. And um, looking at the login, it's coming soon that um, there will not only be the two login possibilities, so not only the, um, as you can see here on the picture, you can see the singer sign on and the orchid there will be a third one um, which is called the um, nfdi for ing aai so um, short just the reg app and um, this will be also usable for everyone so you can use the um, singer sign on and in the future inside of the reg app it should be also possible that you can log in with the orchid and um, here is uh, the reminder that you should link both of the accounts. It's also the case when you are logged in to Cosign at the moment where um, the SSO and the ORCID is available that um, you link your accounts because otherwise, for example, if you first log in to Cosign with the ORCID, you create um, a project and afterwards you link your account to your SSO, you will not get the quota afterwards for the projects which you've already created when you just logged into Cosign with the Orchid because Cosign didn't know who you are, if you are allowed to use the storage, etc. So um, yeah, just as a reminder that you keep uh, in mind when you are using Cosign, then you should uh, link your accounts to just um, get all of your data. And it's also a good possibility, for example, um, the linking to the ORCID is always a good idea when you are leaving your institute or um, your institution in general and you 
are still allowed to um, get access to the data, then you will still have it because you can still log in with your kit. And uh, even if your single sign on is not working, you can use cosign and um, yeah, get access to your data. And um, yeah, hopefully it will be coming soon, hopefully during the next days. Um, no worries at the moment, there is, um, I guess, the maintenance going on. Uh, regarding this feature, um, but hopefully um, during the next days, maybe you can already see it on live. What else uh, did we get during the last month? Um, there's two important things I would say regarding the upload, uh, which we improved. So um, now it is also possible to upload folders in Cosign. So before it was just uh, possible to upload single files, and now you can. Um, upload a whole folder just by um, yeah, drag and drop, which is uh, the convenient way, I would say. You can also um, use the drop down button and just um, upload the files as you would upload a single file. And then you can um, decide if you want to type in the metadata on the folder level or if you want to um, add the metadata on the file level, um, as you would do if you would use the single file upload. But I guess this is uh, quite nice if um, you have, for example, data which is roughly always the same, and then you can just drag and drop the whole folder and save a lot of time. Then there is another improvement uh, where we get a lot of positive feedback uh, for, which I could personally really understand because um, in the last month, the upload via the uh, UI or the API was quite a bit slow and it was not working that good, but now we improved it and um, we tested it at least up to 20 gigabyte. Um, maybe there's even more possible, which you could now upload via the web interface. And if you have bigger data than that, or if you see that um, still the upload is too slow or not stable enough, you can um, use the S3 storage. And then, as we've heard before, um, you can do the quota application via the arts platform. Some new features regarding metadata. Um, there is one feature, I guess this is um, already a few months uh, old, that you can activate local metadata copies. Um, so it's inside of the, um, uh, where you can also delete um, a resource and um, archive the resource, etc. cetera. Um, you can activate it manually that you want to um, have local metadata copies. So, for example, if you at some reason want to transfer your metadata to another place, um, this can be then done in an easy way. But you should um, also keep in mind that this uh, might have consequences um, in a yeah slow or in a low way to your um, storage capacity. Another feature um, where I also have uh, some more slides um, coming now is the metadata extraction as well as the metadata templating. Um, this was um, developed by one um, PhD by us um, and I also will show you his slides in a second um, because this is a feature which is quite interesting if you want to um, save some time when you enter your metadata and if you want to make sure that your metadata is complete and you don't need to type in each metadata by your own. So um, just as a hint before I show you um, how it works and what are the um, the advantages of this feature, um, at the moment it's not automatically activated, so you cannot try it um, directly, but if you're interested, um, we are looking for test users and you can contact the um, service desk of the RWTH and then we will um, enable it for you. And there's also some um, more input uh, as always on the cosign documentation uh, page if you want to first read a bit more about it. Um, yeah, what is the motivation for automatic metadata extraction? So, um, of course, we always want to know what our research data is about and we want to have this uh, information in the most detailed way. Um, but uh, this is most of the time very time consuming and we just want to put in as much time as necessary. And um, that's why there is the following proposition. So it's 
the dream is that we have our research data, then there will happen the magic that uh, the metadata extraction take place and then directly from the file um, it will be entered who is the creator, what's the title, when was the um, file created, maybe also the subject area, the resource, etc. So um, this is also a good example to show you how the metadata profiles and cosign looks like. So as you can see, you have also here the mandatory files. You can add some um, obligatory files and you also could um, have some drop down lists, etc. So this is the metadata profile, which you, if you upload a file via the um, web interface, you always need to fill out before you are able to upload the file. One easy example, um, which I guess presents it in a good way, how metadata um, extraction works. So for example, you have here an image and you have um, some different fruits on it. And um, you could count by your own um, how many fruits are there. And um, of course you see it's rectangular, etc. And if you would count, you would see that there are 10 oranges, uh, six apples, and you would assume that there are five bananas. If you're using, um, Metadata extraction, it will extract you all of the data which it gets. So, um, yeah, that's an image that you see apples, bananas, orange, etc. And then maybe you would see that here for bananas, there is um, mentioned a six because it will count one more banana which could lie um, behind and it will directly extract it. And um, yeah, just I guess quite cool. And here you can see again that um, all of the stuff can be directly extracted and you don't need to enter it by your own and um, yeah that's the there might be the banana which the um, method already mentioned here's the short video which hopefully shows um, how it works in general due to the maintenance uh, which is going on at the moment i decided to just uh, use the video which we already have just to show you in a brief way how it works, um, how you can do it, and um, yeah, what the advantages advantages of this feature are. And here you also see that uh, metadata profiles can be quite long and um, you can add a lot of information and um, yeah quite interesting feature i would say and um, oops. Um, as you've interested just contact the service desk or read the documentation and get some more input and of course if you have questions before you can also contact the service desk and we will try to answer it as soon as possible then I would give you, uh, I want to give you some other outlook on features um, which we want to establish or the first one we've already um, implemented. So there is a new function that you can share your data. I guess I've already mentioned it in one um, of the first slides that um, there's a possibility to get a download link and this link is um, active for 24 hours. So um, when you are inside your project and inside of one resource and you see all of your files, you can um, just click on the three dots and then you can um, get this um, download link and you can share the link outside of Cosign. Um, when you enter it inside um, the internet, uh, the automatic download is uh, directly triggered. So this is also a good possibility if you don't want or don't be able to um, add other people to your project and for example you just want to share one file you can use this um, feature and they will be able to download it and um, yeah don't need access to cosign at this moment another feature uh, which is also coming soon hopefully um, in one week um, there is then the feature that you can in an easy way contact Eritrea publications. As I've mentioned before in COSAN, it's not able or it's not possible to directly publish 
data, um, but we want to improve how you can contact publication services. We decided to start with Avatar Publications because, um, yeah, Cosign is developed at the RWTH and um, then it's the easiest way because we are in um, exchange with um, RWTH Publications and the team. And um, then you can decide um, for which project you want to ask for um, a publication. You can decide if all of the resources inside should be part of a publication or just some of the resources. And then you will fill out a formula and then um, an email will be sent it to um, RWTR Publications and they can get in contact with you. And we hope that when this feature works and we will just do a quick um, test phase, um, we will be able to include further publication services in the future. So if you are not from the RWTR, um, please be aware that we hope that in the future we will have more um, data publication services and then the contact to the services should be much easier than it is now. Coming to some further input and uh, roughly my uh, last slides now, um, there are so-called community features inside um, GitLab. So there we save all of the um, stuff which the Coastline community creates. So for example, if you as a user write a script to upload or download um, your data to Cosign in an automatic way, or if you create a website for the researchers and then can uh, they can just in an easy way upload their data or some fancy stuff um, by creating metadata profiles, etc. Feel free to um, help other researchers and add it to this um, project. Um, yeah, we are always happy to have some examples from everyday researchers. Um, if you just uh, want to give us some feedback, of course, this is also always welcome. And uh, yeah, if you want to share it, uh, we are really happy to hear from you. And with this, I would really like to thank you for your attention. Um, maybe if you want to have a look on the Cosine website, on the Cosine documentation, or I can also highly recommend to sign in to our newsletter because um, the features which I've presented today in the newsletter, you will be informed as the first and then you will always get um, yeah, the newest information. And if you have questions or feedback, always feel free to um, contact the service desk.